Let's take an early look at the curious accident that happened up around the North Pole region. The accident thankfully didn't end in any fatalities, but it could have been so much worse. The aircraft involved is a bit mysterious, has nine separate engine pods, apparently, that are independently fed. The flight began from an undisclosed location near the North Pole. The pilot took off and almost immediately, we can see from ADS-B tracks, erratic aircraft behavior. There's a series of turns in either direction. There's some climbs and descents. The pilot does seem to gain control and climb out, but then shortly thereafter, he'll turn back towards the airport in an attempt to turn back and come back to the airport for whatever reason. The pilot's able to manipulate himself to get on final. The final is nowhere near a stabilized approach. The pilot comes in, lands the aircraft hard, it tumbles into a runway excursion, and packages are seen thrown across the runway in the landing environment. We can hear from these radio transmissions from liveatc.net, the final transmissions of what was a demanding flight. Toy sled one, North Pole departure, radar contact, climb and maintain 10,000. In trying to recreate the flight, there are some odd things about this flight from the very start. First, the erratic behavior of the aircraft after takeoff seems to indicate the potential for the aircraft being overloaded. That's somewhat reinforced by the eyewitness accounts we have, which say the pilot was throwing glittery objects from the aircraft as it was going through its erratic flight profile. This suggests that a potential cause for this mishap is a weight and balance consideration. Much too early for us to make that call, but it's certainly something the NTSB should look into. The pilot and pilot proficiency is certainly something the NTSB will look at. From what we can ascertain, the last time the aircraft flew, a TS-9R aircraft, was on December 24th of last year. In the interim, it's unclear if the pilot, known as Nicholas or Chris, had flown in between, and his CFI, known locally as Mama Claus, was unavailable for comment and refused any kind of interviews with us or the NTSB. Another theory regarding this mishap is a loss of thrust. So the TS-9R apparently has nine separate thrust pods, each of which are independently fed. Whether or not the pilot's proficiency in maintaining control of the aircraft, if one or more of those thrust pods were to fail, is unknown. But it's certainly easy to understand how that aircraft would go out of control if one or more thrust pods failed and the pilot wasn't ready to deal with it. Another potential for this accident is VFR into IMC. The conditions are certainly a factor for this mishap. It was a dark night, blowing snow conditions. Why the pilot decided to take off was unclear in the first place. We understand that apparently he was preparing for a larger mission later this month, but the details behind that have been vague from the start of the investigation. But if the pilot in fact took off on, in such challenging conditions, why the pressure to take off is unknown, and it certainly could have been a VFR into IMC mishap. VFR into IMC anytime is problematic. VFR into IMC at night is especially problematic and especially demanding. In this case, the TS-9R is equipped with a bright red light on the front of one of the thrust pods. Apparently, the light is powered by biological process. It's unknown whether or not that red light was working. Eyewitness reports don't indicate any kind of a red light, which is a key factor for the TS-9R being visible and being able to provide the pilot visibility in low light conditions. A final theory on this mishap is the pilot's fitness to fly. Apparently, there were holiday celebrations the night before the flight that went well into the night and into the early morning. And NT, early NTSB reports are that a chocolatey substance was found on the seat of the aircraft and cookie crumbs and sugary substances were spread throughout the aircraft. That's certainly something the NTSB will look hard at in their investigation. Was the pilot fit to fly? There's a lot more to learn about this mysterious mishap. 
until the NTSB finishes its investigation, there's still some takeaways that all of us GA pilots can learn from. First, when it comes to holiday flying, there's always a lot of emotional pressure on us as pilots to get there and be with our families, and we have a strong desire to be there and be with our families. But we have to make sure we're objective and make the right go-no-go -no -go decision. And then to realize that holidays bring a lot of fatigue, emotional fatigue and physical fatigue. We're typically working long hours to wrap work up to be done for the holidays. We've done a lot of shopping and other activities, sometimes some fest festivities, some parties, and we just need to make sure that we're getting the proper rest so we're ready to take the flight, especially if it involves IFR conditions. Fly safe this holiday season. Thanks for watching. Ho, ho, ho!